All right. Hello, 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 man. All right, my time is ticking. Hello, Lane. Hello, groups. Yeah, I see y'all. All right, there you go. Let, let's jump into it. Let, let's, just, let's just clear away all the clutter, no cute stories, nothing like that. Are you holy? Are you a holy person? Are you blameless? This isn't rhetorical. We're not in a funeral home. You can talk. Are you, are you blameless? How about pure? Righteous? How about this one? Perfect. Hmm. We'll see about that. Yesterday's word was regeneration, new birth, radical spiritual renewal. Today's word is justification. Say justification. justification. It's this legal word. It's a courtroom word. It's a one and done word. It's a judicial word that means you're declared not guilty, that you are in right standing with God. And it's once and for all you are justified from your sins. Declare not guilty. Because the evil one has infiltrated shame into this room today, I immediately have lost some of you with even the definition of the word justification, that you're declared not guilty or that you're in a right standing with God because you don't feel like you're in a right standing with God. Did you hear what my friend Beth on the video said? And I believe Beth's going to be here this week, which is awesome. So yeah, Beth said shame takes on a whole new level when you're caught. Is that right? You know what it's like to be doing something wrong at home and then you're caught and then the shame that comes along with that. When it's made public, we feel shameful. We start even to pull away. But sometimes when we're caught, it also brings a sense of relief because there can be repentance and, and restoration with, with a family member or friend or whatever is going on there. But what about the shame of not being caught? What about the shame of that when you're not caught and it just conde you condemn yourself, it eats you up from the inside out. We know how that feels as well. When we condemn ourselves and shame lies to convince you that there are things that you have done that are too filthy and too unholy to be declared, to be declared justified, to be declared not guilty there. And so when we, uh, we think that we have to steer completely clear of any kind of sin, that's what Beth had said in there, that if we just avoid all sin whatsoever then and only then can I be in right standing with God so when I quit cussing or when I quit looking at porn or when I quit fighting with my parents or cheating in school when I quit messing around with my boyfriend or my girlfriend or I've gotten rid of all of my addictions on my own and all of these vices when I start praying more and reading my Bible more then and only then can I be worthy and can I just be straight up honest with you that if it is going to be dependent on me to get all of that stuff right, I will not ever be declared not guilty because I feel always guilty. I don't see how there could possibly be a way that I personally can be declared not guilty. I don't see how there can be a way that I can be justified. And then this happens. And sometimes we don't know what to do with this except for to say Jesus died on the cross for my sins, which is absolutely true and the right thing to be, say, to be said. And yes, I have tons of vices. Many of them I just listed out for you and many of them you can relate to. And our vices must be dealt with and we're going to help you with that this week. Your leaders are going to help you with that. But no one, hear me loud and clear, no one has ever been declared not guilty by overcoming or by by heaping more sin and shame into their lives. Nobody has ever overcome shame by condemning themselves more and more and more. It just doesn't work that way. Justification is not some self-help therapy designed to make us feel better. We can't reduce shame with just simply happy thoughts. Shame is eradicated through the cross of Jesus Christ. Sin is done away with once and for all because of what Jesus has done for us. Jesus is the embodiment of my sin. Did you catch that? He's the embodiment of my sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made him, God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. I am declared righteous before God. 
because of what this person has done for me on the cross. He has embodied my sin. But we all start to feel bad. I feel bad. I feel that guilty feeling whenever I mess up. I'm shameful. I'm self-condemned. And just because I feel that way doesn't mean that it's true. Facts override feelings. Facts always override feelings. And the fact is, is that this man did his job. He did his job and went to the cross. And so when God looks at me, I do not want God looking at me like this with all of my sin, shame, nastiness all exposed because then I am condemned. But when God our Father on Judgment Day looks at me, or not even on Judgment Day, today, today when he looks at me, he sees me through the blood of Jesus Christ. When he's looking at me, he sees his Son And his son is holy. His son is blameless. His son is pure. His son is righteous. His son is perfect. So am I. So am I. Why is it when somebody asks you if you're holy, you instantly say no? Why when they say, are you perfect? Do you say no, pure, righteous, and all of those things? Who lied to you and said that those answers are no? Stop looking at your sin and start looking at your Savior. I said it once already. I'll say it again today. You are perfect because of this man. You are righteous because of what he has done. You have been declared once and for all not guilty because of Christ on the cross. Facts override your feelings. Ephesians 1.4, write that verse down, write it down. Ephesians 1.4, look at it later. It says you have been chosen. You are chosen to be holy and blameless in his sight. You are holy and blameless in God's sight because when he looks at you, he looks at his son Jesus. He looks at his blood. You are justified. For you, through Jesus, forever. 